Welcome to the world of Bull. Bulwark is a co-optional deck building card game. For players of 1 to 4, you work together as a team in a fantasy setting in which you are heroes facing an amassing army. Through building your deck and teamwork, you'll succeed in holding out against and defeating your foes. The Bulwark set includes various miscellaneous cards which can be used for reference during gameplay. Penalty cards called Wounds with various ways of deck removal. There are various locations to choose from, armies to choose from, and characters to play. With variety increased through expansions. A visual example of setup. Character. Your character comes with a double-sided title card, along with 10 marked cards, which will belong to your starter deck. The rest of the cards included in your class are for your personal supply. In which upgrades are placed underneath their prerequisites. Arranged underneath your title card as this. To draw up, make sure that the cards are shuffled. Then take five cards in hand. Location. Your location comes with a double-sided title card with flavour text. And six location-specific piles, of which all playing characters can purchase. As always, upgrades are placed beneath the prerequisites. As a central location, the wound deck may be shuffled and placed here too. Faux deck. Your faux deck comes with a double sided title card. Printed on it, a suggested number of start phase rounds. The faux deck comes with a variety of different foes, including the crown foes. Crown foes must be defeated twice in order to win the game. Shuffle the foe deck, place it next to the title card, and you're ready to begin. Now a sample of example gameplay. The start phase is all about building up your deck without the interference of foes and wounds, so no need to worry about attacks, just play your cards and expand your deck. Use your heroism to buy cards from your supply. Always draw up to a hand of five. When there are no more cards to take from your draw pile, take all of the discard cards, shuffle, and place them. Use 
you can also use your heroism to buy cards from the location. Some cards have effects, such as Trash. Trashing removes cards from play. Play your trashed cards underneath your character's title card. If a card has When Remains as part of its text, it stays in front of you after being played. In the main phase, the army has approached. You have foes to defeat. The sequence of play is, at the start of each turn, draw a new foe, resolve any text it might have, then play your turn. Now you have to start using attack cards. This turn has a one might attack, so we can use it to attack and remove a one might creature. The only one available to take is removed and placed in the death pile. Clean up and draw up your hand. We have drawn a shield card. Resolve the foes. The first foe gives us a wound, but using our shield card we can discard it and not take the wound. Checking the rest of the foes, no more wounds are to be taken in hand. When the final foe is drawn from the foe deck, you enter end phase, in which all crown foes are removed from the deck, placed in a separate pile, and the two piles are shuffled placing the shuffled crown foes on the top of the foe deck. After you draw up, you face the end phase lose condition. In which, if your hand contains more than half wounds, your character dies. 
finish any immediate actions, and the player retires from the game. If all player characters are killed, the game is over, you have lost. Here are some testimonials from those who have played Bulwark. Um, I like the imagination that goes into it. Also the um, unique um, character classes, all very fun, they play very differently, they all have um, things that are really interesting about them, unique about them. I like that it has all the strengths of deck building games. It's, co it's cooperative, I really like the cooperative aspect of it, all the strengths of a co-op game. It's cooperative, fun, and there are definite strategies you can use. And when you're playing together, actually that works much better. Everyone contributes in a different way. It stops one person you know, taking, taking over the game that can happen in cooperative games, but everyone has their, their role to play. Uh, I'd say it's pretty easy. I'd say it's incredibly easy. If you've got a grounding in, in deck building games, it, it's essentially the same strategy. It's very easy to pick up. The game's actually quite easy to learn. Um, you know, it's a very step-by-step -step, um, way to play, and it's not really time-sensitive in any ways. Even if you've not encountered games like that, though, and I've played it with friends who are, who've not played deck building games before, they all picked it up very quickly. Ooh. Um, <laughs> ask me when I've mastered playing it. I am the wrong person to ask about this. I wouldn't say it's easy to master, but you can, you do progressively get better. There's a, a photo of learning to do of how to master the individual decks. Not necessarily hard to master, but it takes a little while to, uh, to learn your way around. Good luck. <laughs> it's difficult to pick out just one. I think at the table, the thing I find really exciting is, is when it comes to that final moment and you genuinely don't know whether you can whether you can pull through or not and then you win at the last hurdle. There have been some very interesting moments um, in, involving um, the mage expansion. Uh, we've had what we thought were unimaginably difficult combinations of enemies out at the same time and actually managing to survive that and win it was, was really spectacular. It would, probably, it would probably be any moment at which I'm, I'm playing, um, playing Sandor the Cleric. I enjoy the idea of you know, taking, <laughs> taking an unlimited number of wounds to do an unlimited strength, a strength of attack. One time we were playing Winter of Death and everything looked really bad, but we did actually manage to pull it round. Okay, thanks. Thank you for watching.